In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a 1x10 drivetrain on your bike. This is in response to several comments and questions I got on, on my 1x10 that I did on my Giant Anthem uh, when I was doing my review. 1x drivetrains have become really popular, especially the 1x11s. The advantages of running a 1x10 or a 1x11 is that it's lower maintenance, uh, typically better performance because you have less chance of a chain drop. Uh, you have lower weight because you're running less chain rings and uh, not a front derailleur and not a, a front shifter. Uh, also, uh, it allows frame makers to do a little bit more with bigger wheels, especially 29ers. This is a 27.5, but it allows the frame makers to get the chain stay shorter because they're not using a front derailleur. The advantage of running a 1x10 instead of a 1x11, two main reasons. One is obviously it's a lot lower cost and I'll go into that in a few minutes. Um, also you can use your existing free hub. Uh, some of the new 1x11s require a uh, different free hub or an adapter. Um, this you can just run your standard free hub. So for this video I'm not going to show physically how to put the drivetrain together but I'm going to talk about the individual components that you would use to do this. I'll start with the cranks. I went with a race face Atlas crank. Um, this is a typical uh, 175 millimeter link crank arm. Um, it's got a 104 slash 64 BCD which stands for bolt circle diameter and that's one thing you need to uh, watch for when you get your crank or your chain ring if you're going to do this. Um, this particular crank set costs about $250 to $300. Comes with a comes with a bottom bracket. I had to get a different one because it came with a threaded. I had to get a press fit. Um, but you can use a standard Shimano XT, XTR, whatever, um, as long as you match up the BCD uh, with the chain ring that you're going to get. And I'll go more into chain rings in a few minutes because I think that's kind of the centerpiece of this whole uh, setup. You will need some spacers um, because you're only running one chain ring and the bolts are designed to uh, go through two chain rings and a lot of times those spacers will come with the single chain ring that you buy. If they don't you should be able to pick it up from your local shop. This one um, uses uh, four bolts and uh, that's the, uh, the 104 slash 64 BCD is a, is a four bolt design. As far as the chain, pretty much any 10 speed chain from the likes of Shimano, SRAM, KMC is going to work. I went with the KMC X10 SL. Uh, it's a pretty lightweight chain, runs about $50 retail. Uh, but again, you can use any 10 speed chain, just make sure it's not 9, not 11, but it is designed for a 10-speed drivetrain. Um, you can get something really inexpensive like a SRAM 1071 or you can go uh, uh, more expensive. Typically the more expensive chains are just going to be lighter. The cassette is a very important component for this setup. I went with a Shimano XT M770. This is an 1136 cassette. So the small, smallest cog, which is your highest gear on the cassette, is an 11 and the biggest one is a 36. You're going to need to get a pretty wide spread, so I would really recommend an 1136 uh, if you're going to do this. This one, you know, these XT cassettes, can, you can find them from $55 up to $90, um, but it's a good, just durable cassette. Uh, if you want to go lighter, you can go XTR, or you can get a SRAM. Uh, doesn't matter, just make sure it's a 10-speed cassette and it has a wide range like this 1136. The cassette is where most of your cost savings is going to come in by doing this setup. And that's because the 11 speed stuff right now is very expensive. The XO, SRAM XO 11 speed uh, retails for about $400. The XX uh, retails for about $425. So again, you're going to save a lot of money. You, you, you could save you know, up to $350. Uh, just on the cassette. So that's probably the main advantage of doing a 1x10 over a 1x11. This is also where you're going to ask yourself if you can get away 
with a 10 speed cassette over an 11. Personally, I have not needed any lower or higher gear than this range, um, but I also have not ridden this bike up really steep mountains. Uh, I live in a flatter terrain. Um, I, I feel like I could do a you know, pretty steep grade on this, but um, the real steep stuff, uh, you know, and I'll talk about the chain ring in a few minutes, but I'd probably go with a smaller chain ring. Uh, so again, uh, really ask yourself if the range is going to be adequate for your needs. Um, I have a second bike as a trail bike um, that has a 2x10 setup, so I've got a full range on that. Uh, so this bike is more of a race bike, it's lighter. Uh, so that's going to make a difference in the type of gears you can run. Uh, if you're running a, a heavy bike, uh, you may not be able to power that up a climb um, and uh, with, with a, a bigger uh, gear in the back and you may need to get a, a larger cog or a smaller gear to power a heavy bike up. So all those things are going to weigh in, but you're going to have to look at the type of trails you ride, the type of riding you do, how, how fit you are as to if you can go with this kind of range. Again, I have not had any problems with this at all. Uh, I, on flat roads, can I can hold about 23 to 24 miles an hour at 90 RPM. Uh, so that's about the extent of a comfortable uh, spin. Um, that's a pretty good pace on a mountain bike. If you can hold 24 to 25 on a mountain bike on a flat road, uh, you're moving. You're pretty fit. Uh, this is a 27.5, so you've got to take into mind your wheel set. Uh, the size of your wheels, a 29er is going to be like running a little bit bigger gear. Uh, so you're going to have more top end and not quite as much low end. So like I said, really count uh, all those things as you're deciding if you can run a 1x10. As far as the derailleur, any 10 speed derailleur is going to do, I would recommend a medium cage. Uh, you really don't need a long cage, it'll work. Uh, and you know, by cage I mean the length of your derailleur. So the longer the cage, the real long cages were designed for the 3x10 drivetrains where you had a wide range of chain slack that you could get in the chain. Uh, this particular derailleur is a Shadow Plus uh, which has the on off switch to keep the, the spring tighter and it, and it reduces chain slap but it, again any 10 speed derailleur is going to work for this application. Like I said, go with a medium cage if you can. The shifter just needs to be a 10 speed shifter. This is another cost savings that you're going to have in this setup because typically you can order from your bike shop just the rear or the right shifter. Uh, I know you can do that with Shimano. Uh, I would imagine you can do that with SRAM also. Uh, but just uh, any 10 speed shifter is going to work. Uh, Again, I went with the XT. XT's, I think, at a really good price point, um, really good performance without breaking the bank. Finally, the chain ring. And like I said before, this is the centerpiece of this because this is what makes a one by happen and happen efficiently. Now, a few years ago, I did run a one by before these narrow wide chain rings came out, and I had to run a chain guide, um, which worked. But ironically, uh, I did have a few chain drops uh, with a chain guide. Um, to date, I have never dropped a chain with this narrow wide chain ring. And if you're not familiar with these, um, it's got these teeth, one's narrow, one's a little bit wider, and it holds the chain really well onto the chain ring so that you do not need a front derailleur or a chain guide to keep it on the chain ring. This one is a race face. I think there's a few companies out there, but the race face retails for around forty to fifty dollars. Um, this is uh, about forty-two grams. Uh, it does have the 104 BCD or bolt circle diameter. So uh, again, I'll stress that's important to, that you match that up to your crank set. This is a 34 tooth, which really works well for for what I'm doing. If you have a 29er instead of a 27.5 you may want to go with a 32 or if you li live in areas or ride in areas that have really steep hills and uh, you just need a little bit lower gear you can go with a 30 or a 32 
Um, the nice thing about this is since these aren't really too expensive, uh, you can start off with maybe a 34 and go up or down uh, depending on your needs if you feel like you need a little bit more, a little bit less gear. Those are all the components for my 1x10 drivetrain. The retail price of this whole setup is around the $600 to $650 range. Like I said before, you're going to get a really big cost savings over a 1x11 drivetrain. In fact, I calculated that you're probably going to be able to save about $500 over a 1x11. Now, let me mention one last thing before I wrap up this video, and that is there are some companies now making a replacement cog, um, which is a 40 or 42 that you can use on a one by setup. And what you do is you're going to take out one of these middle cogs, which is usually an individual, so you can take out like your 16 or your 17. That's going to give you some extra space, and you can put on this large 40 or 42 on a one by 10 setup and that's going to give you a, an extra gear. And I'm not, not going to really go too far into that, but the companies that are making those are um, One Up makes one. I think Hope makes one. So that's a really great option. It's, it's not one that I've tried, so I can't give you feedback on the performance. Um, but from what I understand, you can still go with a medium cage uh, rear, <coughs> excuse me, rear derailleur and, again, have that really large 40 or 42 in the back. Um, the only downside to that would be that you lose some of your range in the middle. Um, so you're going to jump up a little bit more than what you're used to. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really the only downside to that. Uh, so that's a really good option, again, for doing a 1x10 setup. So there you have it, how to do a 1x10 on your bike. If you don't mind, and if you try this, uh, give me some feedback in the comment section. And if this video was helpful for you, and give it a thumbs up for me. Thanks for watching.